Good afternoon, all. On behalf of Sonosco, it's my pleasure to welcome you to our 10th webinar about asset integrity management. My name is Marcel Sminia. I'm the co-founder of Sonosco, and I will be facilitating this webinar for you today. Today's topic is leveraging corrosion data analysis and visualization for inspection management. Let me start with introducing our guests. We have invited two industry experts to shine some light on this matter. Henry Leon and Luis Corrado, and also our product marketing manager Sang is joining today. Henry is a Venezuelan with a degree in chemical engineering from the University of Zulia, where he also completed a master's degree in corrosion. He has more than 17 years of working experience in a variety of industries, such as petrochemical, steel making, and oil and gas, in the field of corrosion control and process engineering. He specialized in, failure, in failure analysis and material selection and cathodic protection coatings and chemical treatment. And he currently works at Taka Global in the Netherlands as Acid Integrity Lead. Louise is an engineer with a postgraduate degree in M and an MBA in safety with over 18 years of international experience in inspection and integrity. And he's currently a solutions engineer manager and trainer at Sonosco. And Sang is postgraduate in mechanical engineering and worked in the aerospace and automobile industries as an acoustic engineer before transitioning to product management of process control instrumentation. And he's now part of Sonosco's project, product management team and marketing team. So before we start today, let me just outline the framework of our discussion. We will start by discussing what corrosion data is, and then we will explore what it means to visualize and analyze this data. Sang will present a real life example of a pipework and spool replacement project, demonstrating how visualization techniques can be successfully utilized in practice. Moving forward, we will delve into how corrosion analysis and visualization play a crucial role in inspection management. And lastly, we will discuss challenges and journey involved in preparing corrosion data for analysis and visualization. At the end, we will have some time to answer questions. We've already received quite a few up front, but be, please feel free to put any questions that you might have in the chat. And also please note that for any reason you experience connectivity issues, a refresh of your browser might bring you back into the webinar. So let's get started. Hi, Henry. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you very much, Marcel, for having me here. Good to have you here. Hi, Louise. Good to see you again. How are you? Hey, Marcel. Thanks, uh, thanks again for inviting. I'm good. Thank you. And hi, Sam. Good to have you here as well. How are you? Thank you, Marcel. I'm doing great and wonderful to be here. Okay. So let's get started. Henry, uh, let's start with corrosion data. What is it exactly? Well, uh, corrosion data can be gathered from uh, different sources. Uh, one of the most important ones would be the corrosion loops, because there you have a summary of your uh, uh, materials, uh, the media that you have in your process, uh, operating conditions, and uh, the most important one for your integrity management system, the expected degradation mechanisms. That's a very important part. And then, uh, all of this uh, can be done from a, from a theoretical point of view when you are in the design phase of your asset. And then uh, one, once your asset is in uh, operation, you will get real corrosion uh, data uh, from your process, uh, meaning uh, that you will do inspections, uh, you will do chemical sampling rounds, and you will get this information. And um, so from the with regards to the inspections, inspection reports, it's important to, to bear in mind that you need to know what you want to, to inspect. So you, you should know what to expect, because otherwise your inspections uh, might not be relevant. Uh, for example, if you expect a stress corrosion cracking, or if that's the uh, degradation mechanism in your system, but you don't expect it, you might be doing a UT, ultrasound testing, and you are not going to, to find uh, cracks. If you are only focused on a wall thickness loss, that uh, NDT is not going to be useful. So you need to, to have all this kind of uh, information in the back of your head when you are dealing with, a, when you are trying to, to gather corrosion data. Um, that's why to have a good corrosion data, you need to have good inspection plans. Um, yeah, I think that's a good summary of uh, what's uh, corrosion data. Okay. So how does it work? How can data be captured in the field? 
Sang, would you like to jump in here? Sure. Henry could probably give us a better insight into how it is done currently on site, data collection at field. However, I can explain how the ideal process of data collection on the field looks like. The method of decoding data depends on the type required, and it can be done through a checklist or even through a measurement set. While printing and later importing the data back into the inspection software is always an option, it certainly involves additional effort and it is always prone to human errors. And that's kind of where the software comes to help. For instance, there is this thing called dynamic forms within IMS software, and it is nothing but just a tool which simplifies the configuration of personalized checklists. And thus, it optimizes your inspection workflow. So the first step is, of course, to, to create these digital standardized checklists for you, for your specific site. And then you can, of course, use an inspection software of your choice, which allows you to, to use it offline on the field. And it also enables you to, to do real-time recording of your inspection results directly into your digital checklist, be it on a tablet or be it on any of your mobile device on the field. This will ensure that the captured data is readily available for analysis as it becomes directly incorporated into the inspection process. Louise, would you like to add something to that? Yeah, I, I think you guys cover quite well. Um, I like, uh, you know, there's, when, when you talk about corrosion data, it comes uh, up to my mind straight away. Um, yeah, wall thickness measurements and corrosion rate, right? So, uh, but I think what the Henry said I like is, is, is it's not only that uh, inspection plan it's quite important that the intervals and the outcome of, of an RBI or a corrosion study are also seen as data, as well as an overdue. If you have an inspection plan and then inspection plan is an overdue, it is also can be seen as, as corrosion data. Um, I would like just to compliment that when you're talking about uh, data, you're talking about data that is coming from design, right? The material, the specification, when you, process that data and generate another type of data that's still corrosion data when you make a plan and then all the way when 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 Sang mentioned the uh, uh, inspection execution when you're collecting what your wall thickness measurement your visual inspection it is also data so that's a that's a collecting the data is a, is a first step into that digital journey through that journey you can process the data and generate more and more uh, uh, corrosion data as you want Right, Marcel. So, yeah. So, so, so when you have the data, the next step is to analyze it. C can you tell us what it means to analyze and visualize? Yeah. So for me, I'll, I'll take that first. Uh, this this time, so it's a uh, when you're processing, analyze the data. I I personally see that like in two ways. Uh, first way is a straightforward uh, when you're looking through into a KPI. That's a standardized way to crunch the data and understand that the that, that KPI is quite important to, to kind of uh, get a trend uh, out of your data and, and have a data that you can recognize straight away because it's already in a predefined uh, format. And that KPI can trigger additional, uh, additional actions to prevent, uh, to prevent the failure. So those KPIs, you know, one KPI is a number or, you know, a threshold, but you can put all that all of that together into a dashboard right so that's 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 a quite important visualization a standard visualization and the second one for me is uh, when you have an anomaly when you have a failure when you have a failure uh, you need to crunch more data you need to analyze the data from different angles you might need to correlate with external sources and so on may i think i think Henry, you might you might get a different example yeah, definitely. I fully agree with you. And uh, indeed, I would like to add a couple of uh, <clears throat> extra examples more from the operational point of view. As an operator, it's important for me also to take into consideration the integrity operating windows, uh, because as you said, in a KPI dashboard, I can uh, uh, realize a, when the process is out of a specification and prevent the degradation of uh, our assets. To, to give you one example would be uh, we monitor the corrosion inhibitor injection and the biocide injection. So if we detect that the injection is not according to specifications, uh, every operator can do this uh, on daily basis, weekly basis, depending on the, the risk that we defined, you will be able to mitigate that issue as soon as possible. Then you're not going to have to wait until you inspect 
your uh, equipment to identify that you already lost wall thickness. So that's a good example of uh, how you can uh, uh, manage and visualize uh, corrosion data. Another example is when you have to carry it out in a management of change, MOC, or a operational risk assessment. Because then you, when you have information, you could say, OK, we are having issues with the uh, bombs that are uh, used for the injection of a corrosion inhibitor or the biocide. What's the risk of this situation? Uh, how can we handle this? So if you have all this uh, uh, information available, you can have a better assessment and uh, make better decisions. OK, so thanks, Sam. Uh, I know you prepared a presentation of a project. Can you talk us through this, this pipe work and spool replacement project? Sure. Let me just give you a brief idea as to, to what I'll be presenting over the next few minutes. We are going to be talking about a project, and this was initiated in order to, to develop a process for estimating the remnant life of pipeworks and spool, and to, to see what kind of pipework and spool needed replacement in the next five years. And also, one of the on the side note, they also wanted to implement certain kind of improvements into the routine pipework inspection management process. So we are talking about the target assets, which were eight different platforms in the North Sea. And you can. Oh, okay. I think we just lost uh, Sang there. Um, he probably has some uh, issues with his connectivity. Um, maybe Luis uh, right. um, ah, he's back. He's back again. <laughs> OK. I think the last mentioned that the target assets for this one were eight different platforms in the North Sea, and you can imagine for a project of this massive undertaking, you would have several thousands of tens of thousands of data inspection points. And that is exactly what we had also in this case. And the starting point, of course, for this particular project was they had historical wall thickness data from almost six years ago. And of course, they also had new wall thickness readings that was done on the field, which was at Microsoft Excel. So the very first step they had to do was to collate these data together. So they just combined the data they had in the, the database from the six years ago, and also they combined the, the new data they got from the field. And the subsequent analysis of this inspection data, along with trending analysis, visualization, was done inside this module, SIDAP, in the IMS software. And the idea behind this was to calculate the remnant life from estimating the corrosion rate trends within the IMS software. Finally, the action was to determine if the remnant layer life for the pipework or spool was within the next five years, and if so, they had to be replaced as soon as possible. To, to get to that point, so the very first step when you're working with a huge amount of data is, of course, to, to clean the data to ensure that you are working with good data. So the first step was data cleansing within the SIDAP, which is nothing but the, the shell inspection, design, analysis, and plotting module, which is used for bulk data analysis. So what I have over here in this slide is four different models. And as you can see, if we were to, to adopt a linear regression model, of course, that would be represented by the, the thick black line. It would just assume that all data points have equal weight. It would also generally not exclude any outliers if it were outside of the, the pattern. And also, it assumes that all the corrosion rate is assumed constant. So from this one over here, the model two, three, and four, you can clearly see that the values that are generated by linear regression models would be incorrect because the corrosion rate assumes these anomaly to also be part of the good data. So that's kind of what would be flagged by the software right away saying that this is not good data. And the next step is, of course, to analyze and visualize the corrosion rate for each circuit by looking at, at what, what you have at the larger part of it. So from this overview plot, you see that the pipe features are, of course, color coded per type. And of course, you are familiar from the fact that when you are talking about different circuits, that could be fuel gas, it could be fire water, drain system, oil, or different loops in a platform. And each of the circuit will have its own consequence of failure. It would have a different RPA corrosion rate and also confidence rating. So it is also good to, to combine them depending on where it is and what location it is. And this bar graph particularly shows the, the corrosion rate as opposed to the, the pipe feature in circuit. And the RBI rate, the corrosion rate, you see that for some of them, it can be adjusted to the actual corrosion rate. But also in reality, you notice that sometimes it is more than 
what was expected from the RBI studies, or sometimes it's less than what it is from the RBI studies. But again, this is exactly where the software takes into consideration the good data you have. And it looks at uh, the histogram where it automatically assesses the maximum corrosion rate for the entire circuit. And once we have visualized in terms of how it looks for the larger um, circuit, what you would do as a next step is stratifying the circuits into several parts. For instance, on the left-hand side, you see the histogram where you see low corrosion rate for the whole circuit. So it's not so varied as it is on the right side. On the right side, the histogram shows you a highly uh, varied corrosion rate for, for the larger circuit. And at this point is where you would have the question saying, is there further stratification needed? Should we look at box plots? Should we be looking at the colored isometrics to, to look at the particular process or is it something to do with the environmental conditions and so on? So here you have one of those colored isometrics. So you see that on the one hand, the ones that are marked green has a relatively lower corrosion rate or ra rather the corrosion rate as expected. Whereas on the top side, you see that on the top right hand corner, you see a certain locations on the pipework, which has a higher corrosion rate. So this is something that you could stratify saying that this would be a separate part. And what you could do is that you could mark them separately as a separate strata. And you could also assign a different level of inspection, particularly to that strata. And last step is, of course, to, to calculate the remaining lifetime of each piece of pipework and to indicate the rejected pipe spool if it has a remnant life in the upcoming five years. The calculation is rather simple in terms of the remnant life is calculated from the, the corrosion rate. And of course, for this is where you need very accurate corrosion rate results. And that is what good data can do for you. So to summarize the, the project learnings, this particular pipework inspection for this project was significantly improved by estimating or rather shifting the focus to, to accurate corrosion rate estimates and also by modifying the inspection databases to, to looking at what kind of data we have and collating them together and visualizing them and analyzing them. And also by enhancing the efficiency of this inspection process by assessing the data and immediately once the inspection is done such a way that you can predict anomalies and you can look at patterns and lastly by looking by strengthening the analysis capabilities these kind of advancements in analysis and visualization particularly helps operators or even people on the field to to make better decisions or improve their resource allocation in terms of how the inspection and maintenance team should be looking at this particular project and also it enhances the overall integrity of the, the pipework system. So that in essence covers the project I wanted to, to, to convey to you. So back to you, Marcel. Okay, thanks, Sang. Um, so now let's, let's look at, at how this corrosion analysis and visualization reflects in inspection management. Luis? Yeah, uh, I think on, uh, yeah, we, we promise corrosion data and inspection management, right? title so when, when when you look at the what is the what is the impact i think uh, uh science case is a, is a good example on uh how to to crunch uh in this case corrosion rate and and how that will affect the, the inspection planning is by uh, uh targeting uh extending inspection intervals right so i think the that, that that's my kind of my personal take and and, and some of the methodologies i've seen um you take that data and see how long can i extend my inspection frequency um so, so that is a, a direct impact on the uh on the inspection management of course you might see the opposite you might see a higher corrosion rate and then your inspection interval will reduce um inspection data will also feed into what is the scope of work that you can apply and what is the the interval um so i, I think that uh, that that concept of uh, optimizing an inspection plan by crunching your data it's uh, for, for me it's a big uh, it's a big takeaway on on the inspection management side um right henry yeah i feel it with you luis and um, please uh, remember that the inspection uh, management is just one part of corrosion data, because uh, at the end this is a loop. Huh? We we have this uh, uh, design phase where you identify your materials and uh, the uh, the media of your processes, and eventually you will get you will get the the corrosion data from your uh, measurements, 
and you will have to analyze it and uh, visualize it in these uh, different uh, ways uh, uh, as a uh, yeah, corrosion rate uh, trends or uh, the comparison between expected corrosion rate and real corrosion rate. Um, so uh, this will also help you, the, the inspection uh, uh, management, to improve your corrosion data because you might realize that you need to change your inspection plan because you might identify uh, a degradation mechanism that wasn't expected or wasn't identified at the beginning. In some cases, you might have, uh, for example, microbial corrosion that it wasn't considered at the beginning of the project, then the uh, well conditions changed. That happened to us. And uh, in, you had uh, uh, SRVs in your system. So now you have to mitigate a new uh, degradation mechanisms that is a uh, microbial induced corrosion so uh, that's the beauty of um, inspection management that is uh, a life cycle it's uh, never ending until the asset is uh, out of operation i think that is your hook louise for the integrity life cycle uh, right yeah i love uh, I, I love the loop so uh, can you can you bring that uh, is it uh, yeah when you're looking at that uh, integrity life cycle, right? So that's that's a that's a process uh, that cover methodology say that's that's you can see as a continuous improvement. Um, in our case, and I'm going to try to address you know corrosion data in in, in each of these the stages of these life cycle. Um, bit of repetition what you said, but now in a, in a, in the in the shape of a framework. So this loop starts at the foundational elements. Uh, foundational elements will have all sorts of uh, engineering data, uh, material, construction material. We have a, a start date. We'll have a process conditions. Um, we'll have material. Yeah, we have a bunch of data. But also, uh, the, like a, a second level of data that was, was crunched, such as RBI data, uh, if you, you can bring a safety instrumentation. So all these analyses will come as a foundational element. From the foundational element, you're going to come up with the equipment care plan. Uh, the equipment plan, uh, the equipment care plan is an inspection plan for a particular equipment in isolation. So you look at the degradation, you look at the uh, inspection frequency, and that's the, the task for that equipment. The next step, uh, as, as you optimize or you're looking at optimizing your inspection plan, you're actually going to see data from different disciplines, right? So you're not going to only look at the data for a particular equipment uh, that's, that is subject to a specific degradation mechanism or, or failure mode, but you're going to look at all the other equipment that are affecting or that, that can be affected by, uh, by the shutdown of that equipment, such as safety instrumentation, uh, rotating equipment, and so on. So that asset care strategy is how you crunch the data from the multiple discipline into achieving an optimized uh, inspection plan. The next step is what uh, sank over into collecting data. Um, so when you say executing tasks in this framework is about uh, collecting more data, collecting data uh, that comes from the, 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 the inspection you have planned from the monitoring such as IOW. So all your IOW data uh, will come as a monitoring and whatever you exceed your your thresholds, you're going to get an alarm and that's going to be part of your yeah, the barrier management part of, of, of your integrity management. It will also be wall thickness measurement, uh, visual inspection, NDT, yeah, that's part of the execution. And then finally, it feeds back into learn and improve. Uh, learn and improve is, 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 is the same as I said back. It was the KPIs, right? How do you learn with the data? You track that through KPIs. You track that to uh, in-depth uh, uh, anomaly analysis. Say why or, or can be a root cause analysis. Say what happened? What does the data that I collected in the field tells me and how that will impact my foundational elements and the loop starts. So I think for me, it's clear that you will have corrosion data. I extrapolated a little bit by bringing other disciplines, uh, but still all these steps uh, and the more data you have, the more quality data you have, uh, the better and the more smooth your process will flow. 
Okay. Henry, what's your take on that? Yeah, uh, I would like to add a few ideas. Uh, Luis, you said uh, a key, uh, a, you mentioned a key element, uh, quality data. It's important for uh, those involved in uh, inspection plans to uh, define the probability of detection of your entities. Because uh, as I briefly mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, not all the entities will cover all the expected degradation mechanisms that you might have in your, uh, your process. So. Uh, it's not only saying, okay, we are going to inspect this, and uh, this is the scope of uh, inspection, and this is the technique. You also need to make sure that the technique that you're going to use has enough probability of detection to have good quality data. Uh, another idea that I wanted to, to emphasize is that not all the information is corrosion data, because you might have a lot of uh, inspection reports uh, <laughs> sitting on your desk, but if you don't do anything with that information, uh, it's not uh, useful data. So that's a key element that you need to find a way to, to handle and process the, the information. And that's one of the uh, uh, benefits that we got uh, by using uh, IMS in our systems in Itaca, because we were able to process all our information and use it as a corrosion data. And we also have a nice way to uh, write information because corrosion data is not only numbers. Sometimes you also need to describe the equipment condition. And that's one of the possibilities with IMS, maybe in general with uh, almost every integrity software, but this is the one that we're using. And uh, with IMS, we have the possibility to have a nice guideline. For example, developing the corrosion management framework where you have the possibility to choose the or, or to fill in the information about your uh, materials in your system, the degradation mechanisms, uh, mitigating actions, integ integrity operating windows. So it's a nice overview of uh, how to manage your uh, corrosion data. And um, it's also important to bear in mind the, the purpose of uh, RBI. Some uh, in some companies or uh, some managers, they might think, OK, if we're going to uh, implement RBI, that means that we're going to have uh, uh, more time between inspections. And that's not necessarily the, the case. Uh, RBI, the real final goal of RBI is to uh, bring you in a safe operation to identify your risk and mitigate them. So that might be, uh, that might bring the consequence that you, ha you will have to inspect with a higher frequency. Instead of every six years, you have to inspect every two years, but you will be in control of your processes. So um, RBI is not only extending the inspection frequency, but making sure that you are in control of your process. Thank you, Marcel. OK, thank you, Henry. I need to wrap it up. Uh, anything to add to that, Henry? No, I'm done. Yeah, then, Luis, any last words from your end? Yeah, no, I think I think it's. Uh, I, I would like to to tap the same key as as, as the quality of data, right? So uh, when you're looking at um, uh, the data, you can see a lot of people use the term harvest data, uh, but the harvest will be as good as the quality of the data that you have seeded in the first place. So whenever you 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 managing integrity of your equipment. You need to make sure that the quality of, of, of the data that you're bringing into the system. And then here, I, I you know, like Henry said, you might have data that's not really directly related to corrosion, but it, data in general, it have to be structured. They have to be in good shape. They have to be properly maintained, properly entered. Uh, so if you take good care of the data throughout that whole process, not only, you know, during the RBI, uh, not only during the inspection planning, but uh, when you go into the field and you collect data. So the use of the technology to like a uh, checklist, yeah, to bring data in as a structured format, it will help that uh, visualization and the analysis uh, for, for corrosion studies, for example, and degradation in general. Thanks, Luis. Right. Seng, you have anything to add? Sure. I mean, I would definitely acknowledge what Henry and Louisa just mentioned about having good data. 
So effective corrosion trending and data crunching is for any kind of age-related degradation mechanisms will definitely add value to the teams in the field in inspections. And of course, IMS integrates several kinds of integrity analysis tools and which would just be something that uh, Henry mentioned. It has a risk-based inspection module and also it has uh, analysis tools like SIDAP and also for, for visualization and also it has your corrosion management framework and so on. In addition to this, it also provides you your interface back to CMMS and uh, uh, your EAMs, which is perfect because that's kind of how you would map your, your data from the field digitally to, to everything that's been happening. This way you keep all your teams up to date about what's happening with the equipment and you're, you're perfect in terms of uh, how to hold it in, in a good uh, integral shape for, for your equipment. So just my closing remark would be that you can rely on your IMS to, to be your complete asset integrity management tool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sam. And, and actually, thank you all, because it's it's time to move on to the questions. Uh, we received quite a few. If we're not able to, to deal with your particular question, then uh, we will make sure to reach out to you individually. Um, but let's start with the first one I have here. Um, Here's a question that says, how do you handle inspections when you have minimal or no support? Luis, something for you? Yeah, I mean, if, if you inspection, if you have no, uh, no data or no support, I don't understand exactly what support in that case is, but you can run an inspection plan based on time. Uh, and then you require really minimum data or really minimum input to, to start planning on that. Uh, and then you know, but that can be a, a phase. And then the more the more you uh, you add data, the more you analyze, and then you have more, uh, um, yeah, a better inspection. Okay. Um, then another one here: How can materials be selected according to several corrosion types? Henry. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> depending on the corrosion type that you expect during the design phase, as I explained it uh, a few minutes ago, you you will have to, to check on um, materials selection uh, standards. For example, there is a one from uh, NORSOC, the M001. Uh, ISO, they also have the 21457 for material selection. And a common one in uh, for uh, H2S uh, service the MR0175 from NACE. That is the same standard from uh, ISO. From the ISO, they call it uh, 1556. So this is just to mention a few of them available in the in the market. Uh, ESME, they also have um, uh, uh, standards for material selection for hydrogen service, uh, oil and gas. So you will have to be familiar with the uh, material selection uh, standards. Yeah. That's how we do it. I just got one question here coming in that says, what factors to be considered to rate the quality of corrosion data? Luis, and, Henry? Uh, I, I would be happy to, to reply this one and maybe Luis, uh, Sang, if you want to complement later on. Uh, to give one example, uh, if you're going to carry out a UT or a radiography testing, you want to make sure that the possible error of the reading is as low as possible. Some suppliers, they would say, OK, we have an accuracy of uh, uh, one millimeter plus minus 0 0.5. And then can you imagine the effect that you have in your fitness for service calculation if you don't know if half millimeter is there in reality or not? That might affect the fitness for service calculation. So you need to. Um, to define the probability of detection of your uh, entity and also the accuracy and uh, what's the expected uh, maximum or minimum error from the reading and the reported uh, result. That's the, uh, one example that I have on how to, to, to define quality corrosion data. Okay. Yeah, I would just complement making a, a, another example is when you if you do a visual inspection and you detect, uh, you know, an external corrosion or a coating issue, um, you can simply put uh, there was a light corrosion or you can go in depth and start quantifying that type of data. So usually reports inspection will go into a word file and, and just 
provide a narrative on the condition of that uh, corrosion. Uh, but if you have a good uh, quality data, you would uh, use like uh, the Energy Institute guideline to quantify uh, the, 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 the extension of that particular degradation. So that's, that's a, you know, there's a difference in, in, for me, quality. And you also say quantify, right? So you ask about the, the quality, but we also look into a lot into quantifying the data. Is your corrosion loop, for example, has enough data? Does your equipment has enough data? So that for me, I see as a two, the, the quantity, the amount of data that you have, the amount of relevant data that you have, and the quality of the data, you know, how well input was that? Yep. Okay, um, next question. Can you elaborate on system requirements and opportunities constraints in interfacing with a data historian at ECS system? Louise? Oh, that's a new one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so the, uh, that is, it's, you know, I understand that it's more like on the, uh, on the IOW. Um, so when we interface with a, with a, a data historian like OZPI, Aspentake, and Honeywell, we will process that data. We're going to record only the exceedances and see how is that uh, exceedance impacting the barriers that I have built for my degradation uh, uh, mechanisms, right? So if you're looking at uh, um, the corrosion, if your temperature increases up to, up to a certain amount, it means that the corrosion rate will increase or might yeah, typically it will increase for, for many degradations. So how that impact and, and through that barrier management, you can uh, be able to quickly visualize what is the extent of that uh, changing process. And then the inspection team might go back to the, uh, uh, um, to the process engineers and say, okay, was that a temporary change or is it a permanent change? If it's a permanent change, you need to change your barrier. You will need to change your corrosion study. You need to plug in a new corrosion rate and redo your calculations. So for me, you know, integrating with uh, with the data historian is uh, is uh, is quite important and quite a time saver uh, from from the inspection people to uh, to crunch IOWs. Yeah, just. Pick one out of the chat again, um, Henry. It might be something you can answer. Mm -hmm. Localized corrosion. How would you analyze that? Okay. Uh, the first step is to define the material that you have and the expected degradation mechanism. Usually, for uh, by localized corrosion, I would assume that we might have issues with uh, microbial corrosion, for example, or CO2 corrosion. That uh, depending on the operating conditions of uh, your process, you might have pitting corrosion uh, due to CO2. So this is a good example of uh, that you need to know what to expect. Otherwise, you might uh, overlook at this degradation mechanism. So uh, depending on the uh, setup that you use for uh, radiography, you might pick up pitting uh, if you use it. Uh, but it might be preferred to, to do UT to try to, to trace the, the area of interest. So it's, uh, it, we, we don't have a simple question. The, uh, in summary, you need to know what to expect to, have to be familiar with your uh, uh, materials of, of construction. And then uh, uh, inspect maybe with uh, UT or uh, RT. Those are the two more common uh, techniques. Okay. Back to you, Marcel. Thank you, Henry. Um, got one here that says, can we integrate corrosion management documents with corrosion management framework module? Louise? Yeah, I think we're going to stay here until tomorrow. Yeah, we had a lot of questions uh, from, from uh, as a preparation and the good question, the good question doesn't stop coming. I'm very yeah. Happy. yeah. So, um, yeah, so, so if, if you if you refer to corrosion management document as uh, as uh, as a corrosion control document, that might you you be referring to? Uh, be more like are you uh, in, in uh, integrity operating uh, winds? I think, uh, Luis, and uh, because uh, for example, if I understand this question, might be okay. Me as corrosion engineer, can I uh, set up a barrier in uh, IMS? For example, if I detect uh, no corrosion. Uh, inhibitor injection 
I think the, the answer to this question is yes, but not, it's not like you can just upload a document. You need to, to translate the information that you have in your uh, corrosion management or in your corrosion management documents into the uh, yeah. functionality that you have in RMS. I see. Uh, I see. Usually we refer, I see a lot of, the, we, we do have the corrosion control document uh, as per API, which is, yeah, it's a complement, is an outcome of, of your corrosion management framework. So the corrosion management framework, yeah, it, in, it in includes all the aspects of your corrosion management document. So if you have your IOWs, your IOW is a barrier against a specific degradation. Um, all the types of uh, barriers in that corrosion management framework will be coating, Will be inspection, will be corrosion CP. allowance, CP data, absolutely, absolutely. All of this can be integrated into AMS. Yeah. Resistant material, right? So there's there's a lot of these. So the corrosion management framework is about uh, uh, a lot about barrier management and tracking those barrier management using indicators coming from an inspection execution, coming from your wall thickness measurement, your IOW data, your visual inspections. And Okay. Yeah, ourselves. Thanks, guys. Then uh, I think this is you, Henry. Does coating affect the thickness of the thickness readings? No, definitely not. Oh. It's, uh, if you are if you are using the the right the correct uh, entity, for example, uh, radiography, it, it it's not affected by uh, <clears throat> the coating. So you're good to go. Okay. Um, then I have one here that says, can you elaborate on the importance of corrosion loops? Is it also one for you, Henry? Yes, definitely. With uh, corrosion loops, you have the, the, the possibility to improve your uh, inspection strategy and to gather all the information together in uh, one piece of uh, drawing, uh, usually in the process flow diagram uh, format. And um, then you have the possibility to put in one document materials of construction, uh, the media, operating conditions, and expected degradation mechanisms. So it's uh, that's the, the basis for uh, all the corrosion management framework that we, that we, have, that we have. Because yeah. then, once you define the degradation mechanisms, you will also have to think about the barriers that you want to, to implement to, to avoid these uh, degradation mechanisms taking place in your process. Yeah. Back to you, Marcel. OK. Um... I'll try to squeeze in a few more. We're running out of time. Here's one. Can one work without a historic corrosion rate? Because sometimes the cause of a higher corrosion rate is a fault in the process and it's not expected to reoccur. Luis? Yeah, so it, 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 it really depends on the methodology you have, uh, you have implemented. Um, I mean, the historical corrosion rate um, you know, you, you always have to use it when you, if you calculate the uh, long corrosion rate, short corrosion rate and linear regression, they will be there. Um, what we do, it depends on the system. Uh, of course, you can defer if you do an analysis and then you understand that uh, a specific corrosion rate is not happening anymore because the process have changed. Um, I usually recommend the users in, in, in IMS in this particular case to to work more with the deferral, right? Um, or there's a few ways to do it. If, if you know there's your whole corrosion uh, uh, data set or your whole set of wall thickness measurement for the history, uh, historical up to that point has to be scrapped, you can set as a new baseline. But uh, yeah, there's, there's different ways to do it. Uh, one is the deferring, yeah, considering a new so there's a system called, you know, you can input as a suggested corrosion rate and force to use that. So the system will calculate based on the in the, co the corrosion rate that you have input. And then it's about deferring that plan to that calculated date. So there's there's there are ways to uh, to work around it. It's a valid question. It happens all the time. Uh, so it's about uh, uh, processing, analyzing, flagging a cup of corrosion data that is that don't need to be used. So there are ways around it. That's for sure. Yeah. It, it is uh, what I uh, was afraid of, uh, guys. As a, <laughs> we have received quite a few questions and obviously very happy with that. Um, we will uh, note them down and, and get back to them individually. Um, thanks for your participation. But I need to wrap it up for today. So, uh, Henry, Louise, Sang, um, 
It's over for today. Thank you for this informative discussion on corrosion analysis and, and visualization of it. To all your viewers, um, thank you for your time and, and participation. It's good to see so many questions and so many people online. Please take note that this webinar uh, will soon be available to download from our website as well. And then before we go, I'd like to mention uh, that we are also already planning the next IMS webinar in July, and we will share the exact date with you soon. So keep an eye out for that. And with that, uh, I'd like to uh, wish you a nice day and uh, hopefully see you soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye-bye.